Welcome to another episode of Inspired Content. We'll be looking at another couple stories out of the world's best science fiction of 1969. And uh, the two stories we're looking at are Total Environment and Square Root of Brain. Okay. Total Environment I gave a 7.3 out of a 7.5 because I really actually did enjoy this premise. Um, the story's not... I mean, there are ways that I think it probably could have been improved, but overall, the premise is good, and it's, it's a story that leads me wanting to know what happens next. Um, now, Square Root of Brain, 4.7 out of 5.2. I'm sorry, but this was just a snarky jab at um, people with unusual beliefs. And it, it doesn't have a lot more to it than that. It's just not really... But the idea is they inspired. The environment in this idea is a rat experiment, which results in hyper-intelligent rats pretending to still be simple lab animals, and the alienness of their own thought processes, and how they might even be willing to let one of their other rats be taken out and dissected for understanding of any changes that have happened over time. They just accept it. Uh, they're fully intelligent, and so they keep keep acting as though they're just simple lab animals, and they have their own hierarchy, structure, and intelligence, and philosophy, and wisdoms. But somewhere in there, they have no issue with fellow members being snagged out of the environment and dissected to understand better. It doesn't bother them at all. No resentment, no hostility, no attempt to overthrow humanity. A second human race results, one that lives lifespans more like those of dogs. And how, how would you deal with a second type of humankind with such a disadvantage of a lifespan that measures 15 to 20 years at most? Um, they rapidly age, they go through their life, they have the same kind of personalities and thought processes as us, but perhaps with a different concept of time frame, and maybe they learn faster, maybe they can reach the level of a fully functioning adult human at the age of four. Um, but for whatever reason, they have that shorter lifespan, and once they're set loose into the general population, and they continue to be that way, how does that affect our world and theirs? The people develop strange abilities and treat each other based off of their uh, talents. So like uh, hypersensitivity to sound or sight or taste or smell, ability to stop your own bleeding, uh, to give yourself an adrenaline boost or um, have super control over a uh, 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 a muscle group that otherwise you wouldn't have control over. And so they've, they've sort of mastered some of these techniques because their entire world is focused on such a small area of control they have, which is only themselves, that they've mastered these techniques and uh, they sort of fill roles as they you know, apprentice and learn to heighten and uh, improve their capabilities and their own talent so that they can fill niches within their own collectives on certain floors. And once, once the whole environment gets closed down and they're taken out into the outside world, what will become of these talents? Will they develop m more and more distinct talents now that they're in the outside world and there are different niches they could fill? Or do their talents slowly dry up and they become powerless in the outside world? And what does that do for their concept of themselves and the culture around them? This is for Square Root of Brain and 
a party where all the woo-woo, special interest, weird pseudoscience concepts are actually true. And a guest doesn't believe them until suddenly things start to prove that they are in fact true. Stories of people who gather on an anniversary every year to recall the day when rifts in space and time opened up and let alternative uh, laws of physics develop in localized bubbles with different rules and different reality. But one of the members is faking it because he wants to be involved with people from these strange and different environments and with all these great stories and he's just an ordinary schmo and he doesn't want to be left out. The people at the party tell their elaborate stories and the two aliens who are observing them and trying to figure out how to handle humanity are so put off that they leave these crazy apes and you know they'll never get any further in, in development the way they're currently going with all this hoo-ha going on and the humans once the aliens have left the humans celebrate that their performance has driven off the more potentially dangerous outsiders and allowed them to quietly still develop to a point where they can defend themselves should they ever get out into the greater cosmos. Alright, so those are the ideas I got from this round. Hopefully there's some inspiration in there that you can use. And I'll see you for the next episode. Take care of yourselves.